This is Brian from Three Legged Thing. And this is my one year review of using Brian as a landscape photography tripod. Yep, it's been a whole year since I bought this little guy. And in this video, I wanted to talk about what it's actually been like using Brian in the field. How easy has it been to use? How has Brian stood up to the abuse that landscape photography tripods inevitably get? Has it ever let me down? And finally, would I recommend it? Watch the video to find out. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. So in this video, I'm doing a 12 month review of Brian from the Punks range from the manufacturer Three Legged Thing. So in this video, I wanna talk about how easy it's been to use Brian out in the field. I wanna talk about how Brian has held up to the abuse that landscape photography tripods inevitably get harsh environments. And this is quite a harsh environment here with salt, water, sand, harsh rocks, tough plants. It's not an easy life for a landscape photography tripod. I also want to talk about stability. This is a lightweight tripod. Has it ever let me down from a stability point of view? And finally, would I recommend it? I don't do that many gear review videos. Most of my stuff is out in the field, actually taking photos. So uh, maybe you want to check out some more of my videos and if you like what you see, you could consider hitting subscribe. Unless of course you're already a subscriber, in which case, thank you very much, I appreciate that. One year ago, I needed to buy a new tripod. My old tripod had become unsafe to use. And at the time I was looking at reducing the amount of weight I was carrying to improve my ability to go hiking with my gear and I chose to buy a lightweight travel style tripod to do that. And after a lot of research, I picked Brian from Three Legged Thing as the tripod I was gonna go for. After I'd had it for two or three weeks, I did a review video where I talked about the specs of the tripod, how much it weighed, how tall it was, how low down you could get with it, all that sort of stuff. And I'll stick a link to that up there now. I'm not gonna go back over all of that stuff in this video, you can check it out in that video, but I'll also put a link in the description to this video to the product page on Three Legged Things website if you want to look at the specs of this tripod. Okay, so Brian is a small lightweight tripod. Uh, that makes it very easy to carry around uh, with the center column removed, which is the way I've got it here. It's only about 1.1 or 1.2 kilos, I think. It's got five leg sections. And what that means is that when you are extending all of the leg sections, there's actually four locks that you have to undo in order to be able to extend them. And that seems like it's gonna be a bit fiddly, but actually it's not too bad. I must admit, before I had this tripod, I wasn't a fan of these twist type locks because a previous tripod that I'd had with twist type locks, you had to kind of really brute force it to, to lock the uh, sections in place. But what I find with this one is it's literally just you know, a quarter of a turn is all you need. Quarter to half a turn, and it's really solid. So I've been extremely happy with that as a, uh, an ease of use. Another thing that I'll say is, um, I do a lot of photography by the sea. That's sand, that's salt water. Uh, and that can be an absolute nightmare because even if you rinse it down, it can get inside. And the other great thing about this is that it's actually really easy to strip the legs down on this and give them a thorough clean, take all the parts out and you know, soak them in some nice warm water. It's also got a really simple, straightforward ball head. Two controls on it, one controls the, the, the pan and one unlocks the head so that you can move it around. It's got a really simple Arca Swiss type plate. It's just the, the standard vice type grip. 
so uh, there's no sort of fancy spring-loaded mechanisms or anything in there to go wrong. This has been really easy to use in the field. I've not had any issues setting up. It's enabled me to get sufficient height when I want it. It's enabled me to get low down when I want it. No problem at all. Sometimes I take it out with the center column removed like I have it now and sometimes I take it out with the center column in. I've tended to have the center column in most of the time. It's only recently that I've started using it without. Of course using it with the center column out has the advantage of meaning you can get much lower down to the ground but it does mean you can't extend the tripod up quite as tall but it's very rare that I need to do that. What about the quality of this tripod? I've been using it for a year, as I say, and if I look at this, you know, looking at the legs, looking at the locks on it, you know, it, it perhaps doesn't look brand new anymore, but it certainly held up pretty well to the abuse that I've put it to. Now, I'm not too hard on gear. I try to be reasonably careful, but I don't baby it. It gets shoved into rocky areas, it gets buried in the sand, it gets in the sea, all over the place. And it's actually held up really, really well. Like I say, it doesn't look brand new, but it doesn't look particularly battered and old either. Um, the little label, the little sticky label that was on one of the legs that said it was a three-legged thing, Brian came off after only a few weeks, but who cares, doesn't really matter. The only other issue that I had with this from a quality point of view is the little uh, sort of grippy bit on this control here, on the panning control on the head, split and came off after, I don't know, a couple of months, whatever it was. It wasn't a big issue, but I contacted Three-Legged Thing um, and they sent me basically a brand new head to replace the one that had got this fault on, um, which is absolutely fantastic. There was no quibble, no problem about it at all. And in fact, they also sent me uh, one of their L brackets as a kind of apology for the problem that I'd had. And perhaps also importantly, they took care to get the batch number of the product, presumably so that they could go and check their uh, quality control processes or, you know, whatever, the manufacturer of this particular component. Quality wise, this has held up extraordinarily well. And uh, yeah, very pleased with that. Okay, let's talk about stability. This is a lightweight travel tripod and it's gonna have its limits. I've been shooting with this mostly with uh, my Nikon D810. And most of the time it's either got the 16 to 35 f4 lens on or the 70 to 200 f2.8 lens on. Now if I've got the D810 and the 70 to 200 on, that's a pretty heavy combination. And for the most part, this tripod has supported it extremely well. Considering this is a lightweight travel tripod, considering how little it weighs, even when I've extended all of the leg sections and had this little thin leg fully extended at the bottom, most of the time it has completely supported that camera without excessive shake. Now I say most of the time because there have been a couple of occasions when I think that combination of a heavy camera and a heavy lens on this little tripod has been pushing it to its absolute limits. And there have been a couple of occasions, particularly when I've been trying to do something a bit excessive perhaps, like some long exposures at 200 millimeters, that it has just not been able to cope with that weight. Not very often. So there's probably been three or four occasions in the last year when I've shot some images with this and I've had motion blur as a result of the 
tripod not being able to support the camera as well as I would like. There's also probably been a few occasions when I've taken the decision not to try a shot because I can tell that the tripod is not going to be able to cope with the conditions that I've got, say with at 200 millimeters with a long exposure and I can see without taking the shot that it's just not going to cope with it. But that has been a rare occurrence. I've done some long exposures, certainly with a 16 to 35 lens on, on the beach, six minute exposures with no issues at all. I've shot at long focal lengths in some pretty windy conditions with no problems at all. But there have been occasions, as I said, when uh, one of them was actually recently, I did a shot where I was doing a four minute exposure uh, of a mountain at uh, probably around about the 200 millimeter mark. And I took, I managed to get a couple of images but uh, one of them was unusable because of uh, some motion blur. Uh, and the second one, although I managed to block, and it wasn't much, of, much wind, but there was a little bit of breeze, although I managed to block it a little bit, the image has got a tiny, tiny bit of softness as a result of motion blur, which is a shame because I think the image would have been much nicer had I been able to get it 100% sharp. I have to put it into context. This is a lightweight travel tripod and I've been using it with a really big heavy system. So it's, I think it's remarkable what it has actually managed to achieve in terms of supporting that camera and supporting the type of uh, creative decisions that I've made, but it does have its limits. So would I recommend it? If you're looking for a lightweight tripod for travel, for hiking, I don't think you can do much better than this little tripod. It's lightweight, remarkably stable considering how small and light it is. It allows you to get some pretty good height even without the center column. It lets you get low to the ground. It's easy to clean. It seems to last extremely well and put up with the abuses as I say and the customer service from three-legged thing seems to be absolutely excellent. So if that's what you're looking for, absolutely I would recommend it. If you want real stability, if you're shooting with heavy gear and you're trying to do, like I said, creative stuff with very long exposures, if you're shooting in harsh conditions where it's windy then maybe you're going to want something that's a bit heavier, a bit more stable, a bit more solid. And that's kind of the position I've reached right now. So let's talk a little bit about what my plans are for Brian going forwards. So in the past, I've tried to have a, a kind of a one size fits all solution. I wanted to take my best quality camera, my Nikon full frame DSLR and the big high quality lenses with me on every trip, even if I was hiking up a mountain. And you know, a lightweight tripod was a way to try to cut back a little bit on the weight I was carrying. But it didn't make enough of a difference, if I'm gonna be honest, for that reason. I've reached the point now where I think one size fits all doesn't work and I did a video a couple of videos ago where I talked about using my Canon M50, my vlogging camera, which I'm filming on right now, as a landscape photography camera because it's lightweight with lightweight lenses. I'll stick a link to that video up there if you haven't seen it. And this tripod is perfect for that. So if I want a lightweight solution, I'm gonna use the Canon M50 the lightweight lenses, I'm going to use Brian, and that's going to give me a really nice lightweight uh, backpack that I can stick on with some hiking gear to go hiking up mountains. But if I'm going somewhere where weight isn't so much of an issue, where it's more appropriate to aim for the very, very highest quality in the images, 
then what I'm gonna go for is my Nikon full frame camera, my big lenses. And I'm gonna want to have a tripod which is going to support pretty much any creative decision I want to make with that. So I'm gonna want a bigger, heavier tripod. What's that gonna be? Well, let me introduce you to Brian's very much bigger brother. This is Winston, or more appropriately, Winston 2.0. And uh, it is quite a bit bigger than Brian. It's also quite a bit heavier, although it's not ridiculously heavy. I've just bought this from Three Legged Thing. I'm looking forward to uh, getting out and shooting with it. And yes, when I've done a few uh, photo shoots with it and I've got a feel for it, I will be doing a review video on it. So if you like that kind of thing, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. That's my review of Brian. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please consider giving it a like, sharing it on social media. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. So thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.